Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, the 3rd of April already, believe it or not. Um, <clears throat> we've got uh, a letter agenda tonight. We've got our minutes from last week. We've got uh, for new business, we've got our annual Select Board reorganization. And then the, any placeholders for any um, COVID-19 updates, uh, anything we have to discuss on the budget and select board and town administrator updates. So <clears throat> with, uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our newest member. You'll notice Scott is no longer here. Uh, and we have Crystal Drake Tremblay. So welcome Crystal to uh, the first of many meetings. Like what we could get to get inaugurated on a nice short one tonight. So that should be good. So let's uh, let's tackle our minutes from April 26th first. <clears throat> motion. All right, uh, got a motion on that, and uh, I'll second that since um, Crystal wasn't here for that last time. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, two zip on that one. <clears throat> and then new businesses is where we hand it off to our town administrator, this will be our annual select board reorganization. <clears throat> All right, thank you. So uh, first our nominations for chair. Do I have any nominations for chair of the select board? I'll nominate Tom, Mr. Feiden Kevitz for chair. Thank you, David. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, do I have any other nominations for chair? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of Mr. Feidenkevitz as chair of the select board. Aye. Aye. Three, zero. Okay. Um, now, I'll take uh, nominations for vice chair. Uh, oh, the chair takes nominations for vice chair. Um, actually, Jeff, um, I mean, I, I would think that, yeah, yeah, you continue and then uh, we'll let David finish. David finishes off his agenda to, tonight. Okay. Uh, so nominations for vice chair. Um, I'd like to nominate Mr. Pierce for vice chair. Um, do I hear a second? Second. Any other nominations for vice chair? I make a motion that the nominations be closed. Okay, uh, all those in favor of Mr. Pierce for vice chair? Aye. You're not going to vote for yourself, David? I, well, you know, it's... <laughs> I, I just I want to record the. Hey, hey, hey Jeff, I, he's he's voting no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, three nothing. Um, I think I think I'm still a little fuzzy for my Latin, my second COVID shot. <laughs> uh, see, I'm doing the lead in for you there, Laurie. <laughs> and hmm. nominations for clerk of the select board. Uh, I'll nominate Crystal Clerk. Clark. Second. I make a motion that we close nominations. Second. Um, Although we probably have to finish the other one, right? Uh, clerk. Yeah. Or yeah. The clerk um, before we close, but. Yep. So mm -hmm. all those in favor. Aye. Read nothing. All right, I think we're officially reorganized. All right. The next item on our agenda is Lori, our COVID update. How are you? Good. You guys doing well too? Uh, you know, a little tired, but otherwise, you know. That's all you are, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you know. Second shot knocked me flat. <laughs> I, I was a little, I, I was not so good Saturday night because I had it early in the morning and then like Sunday, I was pretty tired yesterday, but yeah. Yep. 
well, I'd do it all over again, so. Exactly, I got it, so. Yep, yep. Um, our update for this week, you know, it's it's funny, I don't, haven't been getting a lot of notifications of cases in town, which is great, but it always seems to happen the night we have selectmen's meeting. I get an <laughs> update saying we have another case in town. It's yep. really weird. Uh -huh. um, so we have a new one as of today, which um, will bring our two week total to six. Okay. So it's still less than it was last time. That's so good. As long as it's going down. Going in the right direction. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I just got to keep people getting vaccinated, you know? Yes. I, I think it's, uh, I just, I was looking at, the, I was looking at the numbers and it says that that we're finally, we're back to Thanksgiving levels now. So they say in the state there's 481 new cases with uh, 18 deaths. So, I mean, it's it's interesting to see that we're finally below thousand. I hope it stays there for a while now. Yeah. yeah. Forever would be nice. <laughs> yes. yes. Just gotta yes. keep getting vaccinated. I heard that like nationally the vaccine, the number of people getting vaccinated has been dropping a little bit. So we gotta... It has. I also heard that Massachusetts yeah. is like number one in the country as far as people getting, per capita getting the vaccine. Nice. Fantastic. That's good. So, keep right. up the good work here, folks, right? That's, yep. that's awesome. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> All right, anything else from your end, Lori? Nope. All right. Nice and quiet. Ah, nice that's good. Awesome. All right, thanks. We'll catch you next week. Definitely. Hey, Jeff. I you know she had your hand up, so. Yep, I, I just wanted to mention that for anybody who is still looking for a vaccine, um, there's likely to be a clinic in Deerfield on May 16th, um, and we're encouraging people to pre-register for that. We have a link on our website. There's a call and email uh, and text message that went out last week. But if anybody uh, is still looking for a vaccine, you can also call 413-665-1441 uh, and we can help you pre-register. Um, the link is on our COVID-19 page if you want to do it yourself. And basically once you pre we're doing the pre-registration to determine the best format of the clinic and how many uh, doses of vaccine to get. So once we have that figure, um, we'll reach out and people will have to go through the, the state system to actually register for the clinic, um, but they will be contacted when that opens. So it's just helpful for us to, to plan and organize it. Okay, good. And pre-registering is very important because they need the it numbers is. to run the clinic. So definitely pre-register for this. Yep, that makes perfect sense. All right. <clears throat> any other uh, any other updates, Tom? Tom, do you have anything on the anything on the local clinics or anything? I, I, I do know I, I do know that GCC is running a drive through this week. Um, so there, there there will be on Friday. Uh, I think it's nine to three. So if you if you want, you can go up there. It's a, it'll be a drive it'll be a drive through uh, clinic. Um, we're like uh, we were saying, Jeff was saying earlier, there's still a thought about uh, having it over at uh, City Tree Brewing, 16th or 17th also. Um, the, the, we're getting the, the vax. I, I think they were saying that they were hoping to get the, they are thinking that they may be getting the uh, Johnson Johnson, but that's, that can't be confirmed or denied at the present time. Um, but Johnson Johnson's going back out as well. So yep. um, I okay, guess we released. Yeah, I guess it's all, you know, that's that's all good stuff. So I think that's still one shot for Johnson and Johnson, right? So it's one shot, yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> all right. Next up is our budget discussion. I don't know if, if we have any any new um, figures to go over this week, uh, Jeff at all. Um, nothing particularly new. I just thought, thought it would be helpful. I've been, uh, working on the, the budget spreadsheet, um, and hopefully we'll have something to, 
post to the website um, this week an okay. update. Um, but basically, one of the <coughs> that we or one of the things that we were looking at is a Warren article we moved into the operating budget um, for the elm tree protection between the town office building and the library. Yeah. Um, we're getting some <coughs> finer figures on the expense side. Um, I think we're pretty close um, to having that look like what it what it's probably going to wind up looking like. Um, you know, to have a decent idea of the Warren articles that are likely to be there, both money related and not money related. And I was going to go through that in the town administrator okay. update. Okay. Um, but I think the the biggest thing is that, you know, as, as has been mentioned in the last couple meetings is, you know, free cash is going to be pretty low until um, it's certified again next year. Uh, yeah. You know, our balance is likely to be under $150,000 um, in free cash based on what we plan to use for the operating budget and the other Warren articles. Um, so that's uh, uh, not unhealthy number, but it's not. Yeah, it's not, it's where not we the more most robust. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I think the good news is we're not we're not dipping into the stabilization fund this year yep. or anything like that. Um, and the, the the biggest remaining question in the capital planning committee is meeting next next week. Uh, yeah, next Thursday the thirteenth, and it's just finalizing what the capital budget's going to look like and how that might impact free cash um you know there and and i guess the elephant in the room is the radio replacements um which yep. is a, a fairly significant sum to upgrade all the radios for our, our police and fire um to the 800 band so that they're interoperable and um can work with dispatch and so um but I, I still think that, that that there is a path forward, and um, you know, even accounting for that likely expense, you know, we should be above a uh, hundred thousand in free cash. So, yeah, a little better than we thought we were going to be going into the whole process. But still, right? It's a, it makes you a little uneasy, you know, looking at that. But. Well, okay. one, 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 Jeff, one, one thing about last year, free cash, we used what, 200, almost $270,000, mm. right? right. And this year we're looking at free cash of 125,000. So I would say that that speaks, that's, that's a pretty good sign. I, I would, I would though, you know, and, and hate to be the, the, a reminder of bad news but we've always been when we look at our revenue we've always been very conservative on how we how we use our numbers and, and we really look at the numbers and use the numbers going back you know three to five years sometimes longer and i i would just and and there's been a push of the last couple of years to try to change change those numbers to get more quote unquote accurate numbers I think our numbers are pretty accurate when when they're originally forecast. The the problem is is that you know you can't you, there's no guarantees in um that everybody's going to buy a new car this year or right. or and, and that's that's why we don't that's why we never go 100 percent of what we think can be there. And I just like to remind people that we need to be cautious on how we use and and how we budget. Um, and just like your own personal budget, you can't budget 102% of what you're, you think you're going to make because you're going to end up in a deficit. We can't do the same thing because we, we, we have to return. We have to give, we have to have a balanced budget. We don't have a use. There's no, there's no option with that. So right. no, one like, to, no one to borrow money from. That's right. It's not like the federal government. We can't run a deficit. So. David, is, it's not like the federal government. You're <laughs> no, absolutely right. Not like that. <clears throat> no. All right. So we'll definitely have some more 
more budget fun to talk about next week. So <clears throat> um, next up, unless anybody has any other questions on that. No? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so next up, we've got uh, any select board updates. I don't know if you have, uh, have anything this week, Tom. Um, I, I, I would just, I, I go back to um, the button ball tree. Um, we, I've been re reading more about the button ball in the yep. newspapers. Yes, uh, it's been getting pressed. I, I, well, I, I just want to, and, and again, um, we, we, we are, are trying to stay proactive with that. Um, we're trying to stay one, one jump ahead of it. And sometime, sometimes, you know, something may sound really good, but it's also, it, it, it may not be, it may not be practical either. That, that, that being said, I, I would just like to, I would, I would like to say is that if you have a question or a concern, um, don't hesitate to, to write our office or, or call Jeff, talk to Jeff or stop by, see Jeff or, or one, of the, one of us, Crystal, David, myself, and, and, and let us know what, what you're thinking. Um, I, I, I would say when we first talked to uh, Baltazar, the general contractor, we knew that they weren't going to be doing any work around the tree for you know four or five, six weeks at the minimum. So um, we, we had planned on getting, when we'd had that there's, there was no tree protection zone signs that were not for us at least readily available. So we had to order those. Um, and we, we, we are taking the tree and it's saying very, very seriously. Um, and I, I don't, I, I just hope, you know, they'll, 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 and also, I would say that, you know, that that tree has been been there three, four hundred years. Well, guess what? Seventy five years ago, someone put a sidewalk next to it. And sometime before that, someone put a road next to it. And so and I'm sure they didn't use it their care that we're using right now. So so that tree, unfortunately, has seen upsets in the past. And um, and we're we're working hard to make sure that we don't upset it right now. So yep. that, that's all I want to say on that, Davey. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. I think we've got a right now, at least we've got a personnel committee meeting scheduled this week, so so far. <clears throat> and uh, I'll I don't know if you have any updates, Crystal, but even if you don't, I'll just toss it over to you. No? Nope? Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, and then with that, uh, it's uh, the town administrator update corner time. Yeah, so the, um, I guess the two quick things. Um, one to just jump on what Tom was saying. We did put tree protection signs out along the fence last week um, on the button ball and uh, the arborist was out today to oversee um, some air spading that was going on by there. So, you know, anytime we do see any work happening in the area of that tree or any of the other um, major trees, you know, we're following up with MassDOT and the contractor to make sure that, that they are doing what, what they told us they were going to do. Yeah. Um, the second is um, we got a request from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to authorize um, somebody to sign for uh, highway materials that they do the procurement for. So I think that the board, um, I, I would recommend that the board take a vote to authorize me to do that. Um, this is a standard, we do it for paving materials every year. They, they put out the bids and, and similar things. Um, I think, I think snow and ice material in the winter too, they do yeah. the bits for that. Um, so, it, and I guess this year with COVID they're wanting electronic signatures and somebody authorized. So okay, um, there, there is something to sign to, but if you wanna take an official vote to authorize me or somebody else, 
I think that'd be good. And being our procurement officer, I think you would be a, an appropriate individual for that. So I'll take a motion to um, appoint Jeff as the um, signer for the FERCOG bidding. Motion. We have a second. second. All right. All those in favor of appointing Jeff? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. Um, and then the last thing is um, I'm. I think we're going to try to have a, a first draft of the warrant next week, but I thought it would be helpful um, to go over some of those articles. But actually, before I get to that, um, the town clerk is on, and I didn't know if she wanted to give an election update. I was going to say, or I, can, I was going to, yeah, because I was going to mention it in the public comment, if, if nothing. So, Wendy, would you like to, um, any updates at all, or? Sure, it was um, a great run. The election workers were awesome, like always um, at the election, it went well. We had a contested race for school committee, uh, Peter Gagarian and Megan Arquin both won and our Crystal um, stepping in in the select board and um, the early voting, I thought in person, early voting in my office went well. Good. You know, the call out on Wednesday, um, uh, I was lucky it was Cindy's day off and she answered her, her mail and I was gonna have a call go on Thursday night, but she did it on Wednesday night for me. And that helps more people come in Thursday and Friday. So I, I thought that was, helpful in getting numbers up. It, it, it was a low number, it's 198 voters. Yeah. Not a lot going on, just the town election that time around, so, yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't sure if it was because we had so many voters at the November election that it just seemed like this was a snail face, yeah. but um, it, it, it was only 198 voters, so it really wasn't a lot of voters going in. Yeah. But, you know, again, I can't tell you how great the election officers are. Um, they, they did a great job. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's greatly appreciated. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. Anytime. Thanks for the update. <clears throat> and uh, I'd like to say to, congratulations to everybody who won. And also thanks for everybody who participated, even if you didn't win. It's very important. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Did you have anything else, Jeff? Yeah, I, I was just going to quickly um, talk about the, the Warren articles, just sort of preview some of them. Um, I guess the, the non standard ones. Um, so, uh, one of them I think we talked about when the schools were here, which um, there were. Uh, post-employment benefits for some retirees um, that the elementary school committee was asked to submit as a separate war article rather than as part of the operating budget. Yeah. Um, we do have some unpaid bills from prior years um, and really the majority is for some reason um, our auditors weren't paid two years ago, and that's uh, that's the majority of it. Um, and then some other smaller ones. Um, there is going to be a warrant article uh, related to replacing the firearms for the police officers. Yep. Um, the personnel committee is talking about um, amending the personnel bylaw to allow new employees one week of vacation after their six month probationary period. Um, currently there's new employees um, don't have vacation until after their first year. So this would give them at least one year in that first year. Um, and then the last one is um, allowing unpaid uh, fees to be uh, 
included as a lien on property. Um, and my understanding, and I haven't had a chance to talk to the Board of Health housing agent in detail about it, but my understanding okay. is that um, sometimes inspections take, you have to go back out to check it, something's not right, they have to go back again, and those follow-up fees aren't always paid. Um, and so as a mechanism to recover those fees, uh, basically putting a lien on the property um, for when those those fees aren't paid. And we'll, we'll have more details about all of those um, hopefully next week, but I just wanted to, okay. to give a preview of what's probably coming. Oh, I'm sorry. And there was one other thing, um, which is a citizen petition. Um, which is a, a safe community bylaw. And um, basically it, it would uh, prohibit it, local police from enforcing immigration, federal immigration policy. Um, and we've talked to the police chief and he said, we, we don't enforce immigration now and we don't plan to. Um, so there's no objection um, necessarily to it other than it's, um, it's not something that the department currently does. So it wouldn't change any, any current practices. Okay. All right. All right, thanks. <clears throat> All right, we've reached our public comment section of the meeting. If anybody has any public comments. A little quiet tonight, all right. And with that, just some other important dates. Remember, warrant articles are due Thursday, May 6th. That's uh, this Thursday. That's the deadline. And our next meeting will be Monday, May 10th at the usual time. Yes. Sorry. Uh, one more yeah. thing that, that I should have mentioned is this Friday, um, Amherst Road slash 116 is going to be closed. Um, there's some filming for a TV show that's going to be happening oh, right. from about 7 p.m. to about 3 a.m. Um, and the detour is going to be along Old Amherst Road and then up South Main up to 47 to the intersection. So basically from Old Amherst to the intersection of 47 or Main Street is going to be closed during that time. That's right. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. So, so Dave, if I could say one more thing. Yeah, please. Um, I, I just, I, 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 I did want to take a second and congratulate Crystal. Um, for and, you know, sometimes people people um don't understand. Crystal understands now. So it was her first election and and getting voting when you see your name on the ballot for the first time. Um, and finding that actually someone beside yourself put an X next to your name is pretty, it's a, it's a very humbling experience. Um, and I think Crystal felt that Saturday um, because although she was running unopposed, we have seen stranger things. You could just ask when Healy up in Charlemont, what happened to him a few years ago. But um, I, 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 but at the same time, I, I'd like to, I'd like to thank, um, the two candidates for um, school committee that did did not uh, win election this time, um, and 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 I, I hope I hope that they stay involved and and there's other many other things that can be done at the school both in the school council and also the PTO and also just being uh, an active parent. Uh, and third, I'd like to thank. Uh, uh, Peter and Megan on their on their victory, and I'm sure um, it's a. They also feel that feeling of humbleness when when you do win an election. Um, it, it it is um, a lot of a lot of people until you experience it. It's a hard feeling to describe to people. So, but I'd just like to congratulate everyone that 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 wasn't afraid to put their name on a ballot. And, and I, I'm serious, I said afraid, but I, 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 I think that you have to, you have to 
really stand up to put get your name put on the ballot. So congratulations to all that that participated that won and those that didn't didn't win this time but just came up a little short. Congratulations. All right. Very true, Tom. All right, thanks. <clears throat> All right, if we don't have any other comments, um, we have a motion to adjourn. I think we should stay to 7.30 in remembrance of Scott. We, we can do that. Okay. All right. Chris, you want to say to 7.30, Crystal? No. I mean, maybe no, we could have, so. maybe we could have FCAT plug in uh, Antiques Roadshow for him at 8, you know? Okay. All right. <laughs> Motion. All right. I so have a second. All right. Second. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye.